Hey, um, so what you're about to see is a video of my first use of the Bial Escaper. It's a new device used for doing single rope repels in which you can retrieve the rope and the device itself so you don't have to leave anything behind. This is not a beginner device at all and even for an experienced person I think this thing could get you killed. Um, I'm still skeptical of it myself so at the end of the video I'll give my feelings on on who should use this and, and what are the possible applications. Here's the video. Okay, this is Christian Frackia from Gunk Saps here to try out the new BL Escaper, which is, I gotta say, one of the craziest inventions I've ever seen for repelling. It's designed so that you can do a single rope repel and still retrieve your rope. So I'm going to try it out here, although I am doing it with a backup knot. And the way this works is you thread this through. It kind of acts a little bit like a prusik, where when you weight it, it cinches down. And so you just thread this through. A little bit time consuming. And I did actually read the instructions on this. One of the instructions is that this black thing has to be below uh, the point when it's weighted. So now we let that go to full weight. Now normally you would just have the end of your rope here, but I'm going to do this with a single uh, attachment point. And before I go, uh, I'm going to leave this camera recording and then I'm going to end up filming it. Uh, hey, I am safe on the ground and now the retrieval. So it's eight poles. So, I gotta say that this increases my confidence a little bit. What do you think, Barn? <laughs> Alright, let's go up and check the video. Okay, so, now I'm doing it for real. There's no backups, nothing. This time you tie the knot in, and I'm gonna head down and hope that this thing works. I wonder if the people who first used cams for the first time felt this way. It's making repelling exciting again. Okay, safe on the ground. So now we're gonna find out if it actually comes all the way down. I know, back it up. Whoa, watch it. Whoa, Barney, you owe me a beer. You owe me a beer. It's okay. Okay, free. All right, so that worked, crazily enough. 
I got a little more confidence in this thing now. All right, you've seen the video and you see how the thing works. And obviously the first concern that's gonna come up in anyone's mind with using this thing is what happens if you start to jostle the device while you're repelling. And that's why the way that you're supposed to use it is the first person goes down and there's a knot tied in the end of it. And the first person clears out the rope so that it's a nice uh, straight line shot so that the person who goes last takes out the backup knot and then uh, repels straight down without any swinging around. So this thing is not going to work in a place where the rope is running over a lot of uh, edges and you're stopping on ledges and unweighting and, and reweighting the rope. As scary as it might be, it's gonna be safest in a free hanging rappel. The other problem is that you might not get the device back again it, and your rope will be stuck if you're in a situation where uh, the pulling of the rope isn't enough to get the device to start to slide through it. So let's assume that you have a situation where those problems aren't there. Well, when is that gonna happen? And I got stuck, uh, a friend of mine and I last year were uh, in the Dolomites on Cinque Terre. We were on a, I don't know, something, six, seven pitch route and we had a single rope and the rope didn't reach for the rappel and it turned into a free hanging rappel. This would have been a perfect place to have used that. The other situation that I find myself getting into a lot, I hate climbing with double ropes in the mountains. It just complicates things in terms of uh, uncoiling stuff. It slows the process down. The big advantage, of course, is that you have two ropes to repel with. So I typically will uh, drag a tag line. But most of the routes that I've done that have repels on them, usually if they say that it requires a double rope repel, it's usually just one or two pitches that ends up being like that. And most of the other ones are set up for, you know, like a whatever, 30, meter repel. So in this case, um, the escaper is going to be great for that. The other situation that I think it's going to be uh, really good for is that there's been so many alpine routes that I've done where it says that you need a double rope repel, but somebody else before you, shoot, uh, somebody else before you has gone down and gotten stuck and then they ended up adding an anchor. And so it doesn't appear in the topo, but almost every time an anchor appears. So there's been multiple times where I've brought double ropes and then I'm rappelling down and I pass a sub anchor and I feel like, well, uh, I just wasted dragging this whole heavy rope up on a route where I didn't need the extra weight. So now with the, with the escaper, you can have the confidence of, of looking for that sub anchor, but if it doesn't show up, then you use the escaper. So I think this is gonna be a great tool to bring with you. The other application would be um, emergency situations where that's, you need to get off and it's going to be quicker uh, to do that with uh, a single rope repel. So who is this thing for? It is clearly not a beginner device. Even for an experienced person, you have to really look at the specific situation that you're gonna use it in and decide if it's gonna work uh, for your particular situation. And um, even with that, I think you could still end up getting killed with it. So I would not recommend this thing pretty much to anybody um, unless you are uh, doing alpine type or long rock routes. Another one uh, I thought of would be like uh, Sendero Luminoso in uh, Potrero Chico. The first few pitches require like 60 meter repels and then the whole upper section, 
I think there might be another long one up there. Now you have to bring two ropes on a 12C. You know, that's, that's kind of crazy. And the, the rappels on that are straight down. And I think the, the escaper would work well in that application. So long roots that have uh, one single wrap in it that's a single rope propel and the rest are, are doubles would be probably the ideal situation. And then also for emergencies, it's not, it's a lightweight device and it wouldn't be bad uh, to keep it in your arsenal. So I hope that helps anybody who's considering uh, purchasing that. I bought it mostly because I thought the whole thing was crazy and I wanted to try it out. And uh, it's kind of been fun playing around with this thing. I just can't believe that they made this because I think the liability is uh, off the charts with this thing. All right, that's it, ciao.